So there are so many apps on the market and it's sometimes hard to decide which ones are going to be hot next year. Well, I've picked out 15 of them that I think are gonna have a good year in 2022 and ones that I think have a good trajectory going forward with feature releases and uh, sort of new and exciting options that the productivity space need. So I'm gonna list these below with the timestamps if you wanna check them out. But if you're new here, please do subscribe. It'd be great to have you. And if you want to learn anything new in the productivity sector. Uh, we've got some great courses on Skillshare. If you'd like to try them out, you can get 30 days free with the link in the description. Okay, so here we go. The first on our list is an app called Magical. This is a calendar application that has recently got $3.3 million in funding, but the application is an interesting one. It's trying to put the calendar at the heart of your productivity experience, allowing you to take meeting notes, be able to connect up tasks and consolidate information in one while still being being a really interesting calendar application. I think it will be fairly highly priced when it's released, but an interesting take on the calendar app and what I'm calling the superhuman of calendars. So keep an eye on this one. Number two is an email app that I use right now called Tempo2. It's currently available on Mac and it's coming soon to iOS, but I really like the approach, the minimal approach of this application in helping you to calm down with the email and process it much more systematically. The way that Tempo2 approaches it is it organizes your emails uh, into different categories and then you can sort them and focus on them when you're, you've are you got the right ones in front of you. Tempo2 is about $99 but at the moment it's an interesting application that's on the rise in my opinion. Number three is one called AkiFlow. We've recently done a first impressions feature on this but AkiFlow is a consolidation application. So if you use Todoist, Trello, Asana, maybe Slack or Google Calendar, it blends it all into one application and it's an interesting approach for an application because you can see your tasks and calendar in one place and be able to time block, organize it, and even share your availability with other people. It's got a free plan and a paid plan, which is a little bit steeper at $15, but a pretty impressive application and one that I'm keeping my eye on. So number four is MEM. Now MEM, again, I've talked a lot about recently because what it does really well is it organizes your notes into a timeline view and with MEM, you can clip notes and save them using the spotlight feature, but you can also add tasks inside of those notes and be able to use your calendar to connect it up as well. It's a really good approach and you can collaborate and share with other people. It's a really interesting application at its heart and I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm also doing a course on it very soon. So, um, and, and I think I really like what they're trying to do in the future by connecting this application up with other apps to help do a bit of the work for you. So let's keep an eye on MEM. So number five is Clover, recently released. We did a first impressions feature on it, but I really like how this app takes note taking and daily planning, but also combines it with Surfaces, which is a, a an application inside of it that helps you to take sketches, visual diagrams, uh, and to uh, you know visually represent things, but also inside of the same application. So it's perfect for designers, creatives, who want to be able to uh, visually represent stuff, but also still take notes and organize their day ahead. So number six is Coda. Now we've talked about Coda a lot on the channel. This is a workspace application that has had a lot of investment, but it's also gained a lot of popularity because of the way that the workflows run and it's really flexible unlike sort of documents uh, like Google Documents you have a really creative way to organize databases be able to connect it to other applications and almost create these apps for your work that you might not have had before or have been able to do in Google experiences. Microsoft are really pushing on this at the moment with their fluid documents and Coda are really in the hunt for that space too. Number seven I am still interested in Evernote I think Evernote is going to be a big application in 2022 if it keeps on the trajectory that it continues on. They had a big release recently. We did a video covering it all if you want to check it out below. But Evernote actually have done a great job of catching up with the market. They're rivaling apps like AmpleNote at the moment, which they should have been doing a long time ago, but an impressive comeback for that, allowing you to organize tasks, home, and calendar in one location. I think Evernote might have a good near year next year. Number eight is Things. Things is developed by a company called Cultured Code and they have a third version out at the moment, but they've hit all their release milestones on this version. So a Things 4 could be on the horizon. Whilst there's no official announcement, Things 4 could include a premium pricing strategy that is different from the one-off cost that you pay now for Things 3, but introduce a whole host of new features and also 
continue to improve on their existing well-built minimal experience. So number nine is Endel. Now Endel is one that I am using quite a lot at the moment, mainly for sound productivity in using it in the background and also for sleep. I'm impressed with the way that the application works, how it um, brings in these really relaxing tunes or really focused beats to get you in the mode for work. And what I really like about it is it uses science to map to your circadian rhythm, the, the weather, uh, your temperature and heart rate. It's very impressive if you have the Apple Watch, uh, but I really like this way this application is doing things. And I do hope that other productivity applications in space start to consider your contextual situations a bit more when it comes to uh, using an application. I think that will be much more prevalent in the future. Number 10 is Microsoft. In their more recent releases, Microsoft have put a lot of time and attention into hybrid work and is starting to understand it a lot more when it comes to balancing taking time to focus and also improving the way that their application works with live components. I really think Microsoft, if they continue with the live component and fluid elements, I think we'll have a really exciting 2022, especially for workplace productivity. Number 11, we talked about Craft a lot here on this channel. If you don't know what it is, we've got a great beginner's guide, but Craft is this documents application that is rivaling Notion at the moment because it's building new features and new experiences inside the application really fast, but in a native manner. So it's a brilliant application on iOS uh, and also on Mac but it's also coming to web and they plan on more. The application itself is really impressive uh, allowing you to create backlinks also sort of build your own home inside of a, a document and also create tables coming soon uh, and, and definitely uh, more when it comes to collaborating with others. Number 12 is Walling. Walling is an interesting application because it's a project management application that focuses a lot on the visual experience. You can create things called walls, add bricks to your walls, walls and section them off, adding images, files, and lots more to it, making it a very visual project management application. Now it's much more structured than the likes of Notion. Uh, however, it has the flexibility when it comes to creating uh, these bricks to be able to organize a project for later. And there's some great templates to get you started. Number 13, Superlist is yet to be released yet, but it's developed by the folks who left Wunderlist. Now, Christian Rabbit is part of the team who's currently working on Pitch.com, which is a fantastic presentations application. But Superlist is planning to release soon. They continue to say soon, but it's an interesting approach. By the looks of it, they're focusing on privacy, teamwork, and routine. So it might be this pseudo uh, superhuman-like application for to-do list purposes. So number 14 is Kenobio. We talked about this quite a lot. Mind mapping, and this is available on web at the moment, and also coming to iOS soon, but it is an interesting application because you can create these notes, map them up, and be able to connect them using these sort of strings between other notes. Uh, it's very visual as an application, and it's great for students revising, and even researchers who are trying to pull in information in a visual manner, but in a much more relaxed setting. And I think the way that Canopio are going, I feel like it's a nice application, and one that suits mobile quite well, surprisingly. Number 15 is not Notion, it's called Motion. Now, Motion has been talked about quite a lot, because it's a productivity application that you plug in on Chrome that does such, uh, like for example, analyzes your calendar and starts planning based on blocked period of time. Now I'm yet to fully try it out, but this application is getting a lot of hype about it and a lot of it at eyes and ears are focusing on motion in the next couple of months. I will be doing a full test of it soon, but I have a feeling this application is gonna break the mold in some way, a little bit pricey though, uh, but an interesting take on productivity. Anyway folks, those were 15 applications that I think you'd be interested in to keep an eye on the next year. I think all of these might have the potential of growing rapidly. Obviously, all of them can't succeed because they some of them might clash. However, I think it will be an interesting year for productivity apps in 2022. Anyway, folks, please do make sure you're subscribed. It'd be honestly great to have you here in the community, but a big and huge thank you for stopping by in today's video. Thank you very much, folks. Cheerio.